Welcome to our Knowledge 20 Specialist Series. You'll hear first-hand stories from organizations that are turning to KPMG-powered enterprise and ServiceNow. Stay tuned to hear how they're getting work done in new ways and applying lessons learned to drive toward the future of work. Certified Master Architects David Goodwin and Niels Bax discuss a recent client question about why to adopt the Common Services Data Model, or CSDM, and how it helps guide the foundation of your CMDB. Hello everybody, welcome to this KPMG Specialist Series. My name is Niels Bax, I'm joined with David Goodwin. Today we will be talking about the CSDM. David and myself are both certified master architects with KPMG. I'm a director in our ServiceNow practice. I focus on the core platform, the CMDB, and other scoped applications. And today, um, as I said, the CSDM, the Common Services Data Model, David and I will be talking about a co uh, common client conversation that we're having about, well, what is it and how does that work? So David, thanks for joining me. Uh, how are your freaking flyer miles going? Hi. Uh Great meals. Uh, I found a special offer on uh, double miles between my living room and my kitchen. Um, so my, yeah, my name is David Goodwin. I'm also a director in the ServiceNow practice, uh, also a certified master architect. Uh, and I spend a lot of my time working on all things ITOM and CMDB, uh, ServiceNow products such as uh, Discovery. So Niels, exactly as you were saying, um, I have a recent client that's been a ServiceNow customer since Istanbul. Um, they've been using the ITSM applications in ServiceNow, uh, and they're beginning to get ready for their Orlando upgrade, um, and also to think about ServiceNow as more of a more of a strategic platform and expand into other applications beyond ITSM. But you know, having been on the platform for such a long time, they've got a lot of data in the CMDB that's in strange places, um, not using classes like the business application class. Uh, and their uh, their platform architect came to me and asked how they might uh, address their, these inconsistencies and what they might uh, say to their leadership to help gain investment to uh, spend the time to you know really re-architect the CMDB and get it to follow the CSDM. Like they really looking for like what's the value of the CSDM and why would they go about this transformation? Why not just do a, a regular in-place upgrade for a faster deployment? That's a great uh, conversation. Yes, I've been into that conversation myself a lot. Um, where I usually start those conversations is, is making sure that you know the architect himself probably does, but their leadership understands what the CSDM is and what is the, the value of being in a, a common services data model and also what it is not and what it won't bring you. So for me, the CSDM um, is this prescriptive data model um, that ServiceNow has introduced that defines how to best store a lot of common information that uh, every organization has into ServiceNow in the appropriate classes um, as part of the CNB or other related tables. And that really helps you to make the best use of the ServiceNow products and the new products to come. Um, the CSDM is, is not the CMDB, right? The CMDB is the set of tables that we all know and come to love, but the CSDM is more that data model and uh, also the guidance on how do you relate certain things, how do you relate applications to services and things like that. So once I work with the client and make sure that they have an understanding of what that CSDM is and what it is not, I would typically focus on highlighting the value. Why is it important to that, do that? Um, I know you and I have talked about this in the past, but what, how would you summarize the key value adds of the CSDM? To me, I've always thought of the CMDB as being this uh, Lego kit that's got all these great pieces in it, but doesn't come with any instructions. And now I feel like the CSDM is kind of the instructions that helps me assemble the CMDB in the correct manner that I really end up with a, you know, a, some amazing looking model that's uh, coherent. Um, the CSDM really, right, fundamentally is all about making sure that the data is in the right place so that you can develop a service-oriented view of the data that's in service now, right? So going from these tasks and records about infrastructure, but then being able to take data out of the system that gives you a, a view that's more meaningful and more aligned to like your business operations, your business capabilities, uh, and the services you're providing your customers. That, that's, the, that's the dream of following the CSDM. More tactically, I think by following the CSDM, you're going to find that your uh, environment is better aligned to the different ServiceNow products. 
right? So if you start to expand into using things like application portfolio management or ITFM or event management, the data is going to be in the right places in the CMDB for these different applications to consume that data. And so the, you'll benefit from more automation, you'll benefit from um, more immediate functionality from these applications uh, and not have to do rework and so on. Uh, also, if you're following the classes and using the classes as intended, that should result in less customizations, right? Because you're going to have the out-of-the-box data points which are there for your for your use, um, as opposed to like if you're trying to like uh, push a, a you know a round peg into a square hole, as it were. Um, and so that should also then lead you to easier upgrades um, and make it generally easier around the roadmap in terms of as you add in future ServiceNow products or as ServiceNow develops additional products. The other thing I think that's useful is right is there's this cool walk run approach. So you don't it's not an all or nothing. Like clients can um, incrementally build into this uh, and refine the data model over time and expand into the scope of the CSDM over time. Uh, what do you see as some of the uh, common ways that our clients are typically not following CSDM today? Like how are they, what are some of the common sort of misalignments that we're seeing? Yeah, I, I, I really think that um, the, the alignment to the CSDM really helps those products. So where I typically see where um, existing users of ServiceNow are not aligned to the CSDM it's mostly in the business application space. Um, in earlier releases, ServiceNow um, had a concept of business service, and I think the name threw off some people good for ServiceNow. They, they renamed it to uh, application services going forward or services going forward, so that, that already removed some of the confusion on when and how to use it. And the other area is the business application. Um, up until a few releases ago, there was no out-of-the-box class for business application, and people started to use an at a table called application because they thought it was for that, but that was also more mixed with more software-like components. So you see a lot of clients, especially those that have been on ServiceNow for a few years before um, the initial steps ServiceNow made towards the CSDM were, were brought on board, they have their stuff in different tables. And that's the first area I would focus on, getting your services aligned, getting your services defined and your business application. And, and that for me is also the centerpiece of the CSDM. To help our listeners understand a little bit about what is the business application and what is an application service, maybe we can best use an example by using ServiceNow itself. ServiceNow as a business application, or maybe you can say ServiceNow for ITSM is the business application. That is the business application that fulfills the needs of executing the capability is also a concept in the CSDM, the business capability of providing IT service management. So ServiceNow is that application that I use for that. But I may have four different instances of ServiceNow that all tie differently in the underlying infrastructure. So my prod server may have 20 MIT servers and my development service may have, uh, instance, may have less or different servers. By a being able to differentiate between the services, I can assign different business criticalities. You can imagine that I have an incident on a production-related MIT server. I handle it with more speed and more urgency than if it is on a dev server, for example depending obviously on the impact. So it's really important that you differentiate between the services or the environments and the business applications. And the, another common use case and uh, is, is clients that have multiple instances of ServiceNow, not, not in terms of dev uh, and, and prod, but actually multiple production instances. We see that some clients, uh, especially large ones, they want to segregate, for example, um, if they have customer service management and their internal ones, so they operate on different instances, or they're a recent merger of two organizations and they still have multiple instances. So at that point in time, you're going to have multiple business applications and services, and that all ties together. So having a good structure around that and setting your data up allows you to better use all those components that you mentioned. We actually have one of our fellow certified master architects, Adam Hutton, uh, recording a, a similar uh, expert session on dealing with multiple instances and, and what are best strategies when to use that. The challenge that comes is if I'm not in that CSDM, how do I merge into that CSDM? How do I bring that together? And I think there is you know, concerns about people that don't use discovery or they use discovery or people that have those custom tables. You as one of our C and B focused people, how would you rate, you know, the, or how would you work that with a client to convert from non-CSDM to CSDM aligned? 
that's exactly the situation we have uh, with this client. Uh, they are currently in a manual populated CMDB and they want to move to discovery. Obviously, discovery brings a lot of advantages in terms of automation, richness of data and so on. But obviously, turning on discovery to an existing CMDB can be challenging. Uh, the biggest risk, right, is that you end up with duplicate CIs because now you have the historic versions of the CIs and potentially the versions created by discovery. So what I'm recommending to my client is that we try this in a non-production environment, uh, that we review the list of classes that they're using today. Like one of the things we want to do, right, is discovery is going to use a certain set of classes. So then we want to make sure that the classes that are in the CMDB today are the same classes that discovery is going to use. Uh, and then make sure that these classes have got like the correct identifier set, right? So things like serial number is a key way of identifying unique uh, server records. So we want to make sure that the server records have got their serial number populated, and we can do then a trial run with discovery in a non-production environment, uh, go out and discover a few hundred servers, and validate that they are coalescing correctly onto the existing records and enriching those records rather than creating uh, new records. And then once we've got some comfort that's working in a non-production environment, we can move that up into a production environment uh, and and um, expand the scope of discovery and, and eventually kind of upgrade all of the, uh, the the manually entered servers into discovery populated servers. So uh, Niels, earlier we, we mentioned a cool walk run approach uh, as a way of incrementing moving into the CSDM structure. Well, what are some of your experiences there? So when it comes to the crawl, walk, run approach, I, I think there's there's two main things that I, I see uh, to focus on. The first is at the crawl level, so if you are currently not really aligned to the CSDM or just starting your journey on the stream to be CSDM um, area, focus on what I just mentioned, the business application and the application services. And a very simple way of doing a crawl on application services that I've seen and used that is very effective is don't try to identify every single service and instance that you may have. So in my example, we had four ServiceNow instances where I would say is focus on having one for production and one for non-production and start tying all your infrastructure to those uh, one of those two that, that is related. That's where I would start from a crawl perspective. Make sure you have your business applications in place. Make sure you have at least two services, one for production, one for non-production, and start focusing on linking all your underlying infrastructure together. That's where I would start. The other key lesson learned is a lot of our clients see the CSDN, they read the material that ServiceNow has published, and they focus on the run and sometimes maybe even the fly portion of the CSDM. And they look at all the 20 different concepts that the CSDM may introduce and say, oh, I need to start collecting everything. I need to start collecting business applications. I need to tie them to capabilities. Then I need to work with technical offerings, and then I need to work with service offerings, and then all my requests need to tie in together. While that is kind of the end state, I think it's important that A, that requires you to gather a lot of data, and B, you need to maintain all that data. And often clients don't have a maturity in their existing data yet, and instead of immediately getting value out of the CSDM by taking the crawl step, they embark on a large journey to collect so much information that there's not really an endpoint in sight. So I would say the key thing is set a clear achievable goal and go iteratively as opposed to start running, you know, start running towards the run or the fly modes of these. So those are the key things. What I've also shown is that this comes with a lot of non-discoverable data. To your point earlier, discovery can find a lot of good things, but this involves a lot of non-discoverable logical data that people need to manually maintain. Data certification in the platform is a great way to assist you in keeping that data accurate. So I wanted to give that tip as well. I think we're, you know, hit a couple of key points for your clients to address. Do you think that's enough for him to kind of convince his leadership to um, take some initial investments and, and dedicate some resources to getting here? Yeah, I think those are some great pointers there. Um, I definitely agree with you about not rushing into the fly approach. I think another good reason for that is also that ServiceNow is still evolving CSDM capability. And my feeling is that over the next couple of releases, we'll see more features coming into the platform to help automate that data management. Like you mentioned, how there's a lot of non-discoverable data there. And so I think there's going to become more features to help uh, make that more manageable, port the maintenance of that non-discoverable data. So I think there's like maybe three key takeaways here, right? 
you know, one, let's make sure we understand what the CSDM is, how it's this prescriptive model for how to how to build your Lego in the CMDB. Number two, make sure we understand the value, right? That it's going to help me drive more service-oriented reporting uh, and be able to leverage ServiceNow products out of the box. Three, you know, make sure you invest in a, a good transition strategy. Um, you know, consider each of the different classes in the CMDB today versus what you need in the CMDB for CSDM compliance and to then really order that by business value, you know, you know, bite off small increments, whether that's by the level of sophistication of the data model or prioritized by you know, business application priority, doing tier zero applications and then moving on to tier one applications and so on. Uh, great. That's a really helpful message that I can take back to my client and discuss with them. Uh, I guess I'll uh, see you in Paris next year. Yes, we'll definitely meet in Paris. Thanks, uh, David. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to bringing you additional insights, lessons learned, and much more as we continue the ServiceNow Knowledge20 digital experience. In the meantime, learn more by visiting us at visit.kpmg.us slash k20digital.